you very much, Chief. Uh, for his last hearing, we're going to have Senator Blunt go first, uh, then I'll ask questions, and then Senator King, and then uh, whatever Republican is next. So thank you. All right. Uh, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, Chief, on the recommendations that we made after January the 6th, I think you've completed about 75% of those. It's also my impression that you may need more funding or more authority or both to really address the remaining um, numbers. Is, is that correct? Um, the authority, not as much. Um, we, that was provided and that has been working fine. Um, in terms of the funding, the, the, what, we've, what we've done in the, first, in, in the past year or so has addressed the security here at the Capitol. And then the, what we uh, really have to focus on now are the threats against members. And uh, that's not only addressing the threats while you are here in the Capitol, but when you're in your home districts as well. Those protection responsibilities will require additional resources. And we've got in our FY23 budget, for instance, there are uh, a number of requests for additional positions that address the protection responsibilities that where we really need to focus. So currently you have vacancies of about, what, 10% 10, 10 still vacant? Tell me, how many, how many yeah. officers do you have right so we now? Have, we have right now about 1,970 officers. And you're authorized to have? We're authorized to have um, over 2,000 so, or close to 2,100. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we're, we're about, I think, 10%. Um, but I, I have to share with you that um, I just uh, uh, was informed today that as we speak, we have 219 recruits in some level of training, whether they're just, whether they, we just brought them on a, a week ago to the ones that are just about to graduate. So we've got 219 recruits in the pipeline, so which, which I think sets us up very well. And we will continue to um, work on our hiring and recruiting and hiring initiatives so that we keep those, that pipeline full uh, so that we can meet our goal of hiring uh, those 280 officers per year for the next couple of years. And how many officers have you brought in in the year and a half that you've been the chief? Uh, close to 200. Mm -hmm. So when you when you couple that with the with the attrition, uh, we we are in fact, in fact the last time that I was in front of this committee we had uh, we, we have now a hundred more officers than we had then. And how 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 does the uh, addition of the contract employees go for the jobs you've been able to assign to someone who wasn't a a, a sworn and uh, totally prepared officer? So that, that's, I think, has gone very well. Um, the key there is to identify the posts that, there, that it would be suitable to have a contract secure or capital security officer. Mm -hmm. um, and these are primarily secondary posts. And we've got about 50 or so assigned. Uh, and right now, we're, we're looking for other opportunities. If there are other posts where we can use those capital security officers, we will. But right now, we've got about 50 of them in place. And so that's, that's 50 posts where we used to have capital police officers that are now freed up with these security officers um, uh, staffing those locations. As you move to more security for members at their, in, their, in their state, um, what kind of additional personnel will you need there? So part, part of the options that I've presented to the Capitol Police Board uh, is, to, um, uh, is to do for the entire Congress what the House is, has begun to do for um, uh, their members, where uh, every member of Congress would have a uh, security system uh, in their home, in their district office, offices uh, so that it would add a, a layer of protection for not only the member, but their family and their staff as well. Uh, one of the things that I would uh, have, have uh, recommended is to have a protection, to stand up a protection operations center so that we would have our folks, uh, whether, and this could be done by civilians, didn't, wouldn't have to be sworn officers, but have our folks uh, monitor those uh, security systems. 
Uh, they would also be monitored by the, the company that installed them, but to, to have that redundancy and to have that instant um, uh, recognition if there's a prob problem and the instant response if there's a problem, I think it, uh, uh, provides exactly what, uh, what we need uh, in terms of enhancing the protection. So, so we want to stand up the Protection Operations Center. Um, the, big, the big ask uh, is really has to do with the, the number of protection agents that, the, for uh, the members. Right now, uh, we, I think, uh, don't provide the level of protection to some of the leadership that, that perhaps we should. It's certainly not on par with what is done in the executive branch. And I think we need to look at that and uh, strengthen some of the, the uh, protection details that we have in, in place. But as a result of the number of threats that are coming in and the number of credible threats that we have some concern about, um, I believe that we need to uh, uh, strongly expand uh, our, the number of protection agents that we have. And, and again, I've got, uh, I think in the FY23 budget there were um, 60, 64 positions, uh, additional special agent positions that would be assigned to protection details. And with the demands that we have, this is um, uh, both uh, in terms of protection and investigation of threats, I think this is the, the big ask that we have. Thank you. I may have more questions later, uh, Chairman, but um, 